Hello, everyone. Pray you guys are well. I'm getting back. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We bless God today. I am trying to bring in Barry. Good morning, Sister Carolyn. It's evening. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm literally just getting back to myself, okay, today. Today, just getting back to myself. So, good morning, Carolyn. Uh, thank you all for your prayers. I'm just not a person that does well when I get under the weather. Hey, Tina, tell your husband to get on. Where is he? <laughs> How are you, Sister Matthews? Bless the Lord. So we are going to be talking to Barry Matthews, who attended the very first Father Forum that we did in 2011. And his testimony has always stuck with me. And so um, I asked him to come on today uh, to share his story. So while we're waiting for Barry to find his way, to us, um, I just want to remind the women that on April the 7th, there will be a special uh, ceremony um, for, I'm, hold on guys, he's coming. There will be a special ceremony just for uh, the women um, at about three o'clock but we want you hey brother Barry hey hey how are you I'm I'm better I'm better I yeah if I talk a lot I'll start coughing so I'll probably <laughs> be relying on you a lot that's all right <laughs> so amen so I was just letting the women know I'm good sister Tina that's your wife I'm talking yes. to <laughs> so um uh the women again two o'clock you are welcome at the forum for a special ceremony called uh, Reconciliation Restoration. So yes. let's get to talking to Brother Barry hey, about hey. his experience yes. uh, at the Father Forum in 2011. So that was the first one that I had ever done. And Barry and several other men were there. But his story always stuck with me. about, mm -hmm. And he'll tell you it. But I just kind of, Barry, just let us know who you are, what you do. I know you're married, all of that, um, how you serve in the kingdom, and then we'll get to the father part. Okay. Yes, uh, my name is Barry Matthews. Um, I am um, uh, one of the elders over at Kingdom Life Church. Uh, our pastor is Pastor Lamar Fain. Um, and I serve... Uh, at any capacity. Uh, I like to serve with um, outreach. Uh, my wife and Amen. a few others, um, uh, Marcus and uh, Rashawn Gibson, we go out and um, serve the homeless um, at any capacity, whether that's food, clothing, or whatever, you know, whatever the need is. Um, you know, I just want my life to, uh, to, to mirror what Christ would want out of, out of, out of all of us, actually. Amen. Um, Amen. Basically, um, in me from my grandmother and my mother, you know, on down the line. And, um, you know, I met with, um, you know, my sister Tuesday um, when she was, um, you know, way back in 2011. And, um, you know, she just briefly told me what the conference, what the, um, you know, what, what the Father's Forum was going to all be, you know, was what it was going to be about. <laughs> and uh, uh -huh. that was real dear to me. Re re really dear to me. Um, I didn't realize, I don't know if we, we're just going to go right into it, but I didn't realize go, go. Um, how many men were in my shoes. You know, at the time, I believe I was like 40 years old. And um, I was 40 in the natural, but actually I was probably about four or five, you Jesus. know, in my heart. Um, mm -hmm. dealing with this, um, you know, you never, you never get over the fact of not having a father in your life. I don't care how old you are. And you already what, helping Barry. Yeah. What shocked me was 
how many other men in the city um, were going through the same thing. I'm talking about there were pastors, there were there were yeah. there were just guys that I looked up to that I had no idea that they were either uh, dealing with not having a father in the home or in their lives, or they had fathers that were there but they still weren't there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. they and that's where I talk about, Barry. <clears throat> what God gave me was the pie. He And this has been since the forum. He's kind of given me this analogy mm -hmm. called the pie. P-I-E. They're present, but they're not engaged and they're not involved. So their child doesn't get the full pie experience. Right. I mean, how are we going to show up at Thanksgiving and there's a sweet potato pie? And you don't get to eat none, right? Right, right. Or right. whatever that pie is, and you don't get to experience it. And right. when a father is absent, or rather he's in the house, or they know him, but he's not involved and he's not engaged, they don't get to experience the full pie of, of having a dad. No doubt, no doubt, absolutely. I mean, you know, my mother did the very best she could in raising, you know, three kids, but there was still the Absolutely. element of the man, the, of the male that was missing in my life. You know, um, mm -hmm. sports was concerned. School was concerned. Um, we're working on cars or building things in the house. Um, you know, those are, you know, type of things that, that a man, you know, would teach his son, you know, and mm -hmm. um, it was just, it was just a connection that I was just longing for. And, um, you know, I eventually, um, I found my father, but I didn't find him. Um, ah. I'm going to be, I'm going to be transparent with you guys. I found out my father was in prison and um, okay. I wrote him and I withheld some information because I wasn't really sure if I was writing, you know, the right guy or not. But long story yeah, short, yeah. Um, it was about a month or so later, he wrote me back. And when I got that letter, I want y'all to listen to this. When I got that letter, you were talking about 40 years. Amen. You were talking about 40 years of emotion, 40 years of questions, 40 years Ah, Jesus. You know, you you, you, you you almost walk the earth like you don't exist because you have one side of you, but you have no clue of the other side. I found out that, you know, I had a grandmother. I thought that I was the only child by my father, but I found wow. out I had, I had two older brothers. Um. There's a lot of there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle that's missing, you mm -hmm. know. And um, how was I going to be an effective father, not knowing how to be fathered? My 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 my, not experiencing being fathered. Yes. Even though we know we have a heavenly Father who Absolutely. teaches all things through the Word and the Holy Spirit in our relationship, but it's it's something about. Having Absolutely. that connection with the earthly father. Now, Barry, was this after the forum that you reached out to him? Yes, this was <laughs> after the forum. Oh. Now, I didn't have, to be honest with you, I didn't have the courage um, or the even the initiative to even take these steps before the forum. Um, the forum oh, opened up, it opened up um, so much for me to know that I just wasn't by myself. You know, that that, yeah. that that sparked that sparked a lot for me. Um, you know, at that forum, I encourage, listen to me, I encourage every male, I don't care what what age you are, from young to old, if you are experiencing any sort of um a lack of a father in your in your life. I encourage you to go to this to this to this forum. Um, you will you will you will never be the same. You will never be the same. Um, we we were able to share 
our own testimonies, our own personal stories. Um, we were able to to love on each other and and to hug each other, you know, and um, just to just to comfort each other, letting each other know that, you know, you're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. Right. You know, there was there was a lot of healing that took place at that forum. You know, I am very, I mean, very grateful that I went to that forum. Um, yeah. I, I just, I just am, you know. Um, yeah. Every time I see her post something about that forum, I get excited all <laughs> over again. I get excited all over again. Yeah, you've been a, you've definitely, <coughs> I will say you have definitely been an encouragement to me <laughs> to continue to do the forum. Yes. And even when I got to this place and I start, God started really pulling at me to do a conference. I'm like, a conference? What is that? That's a whole day. What does that look like? <laughs> and, um, but you were probably one of the first people uh, that I connected with to say, hey, I'm going to do this conference. Right. And it's because I really, I want you to tell them the story about going, was it um, the picture in the wallet and Oh man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you hear that story. But everywhere I've gone, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've kind of used you even in my uh, promo to gain sponsorship. Wow. I have told your story. Wow. Okay. I have. I'm like, so people, you and Paul Bateman, your stories, and I didn't even know about the letter that you reached yeah. out to your dad yeah. afterwards, but that just adds more support to I know that. This vision that God has given me, it is his. It has nothing to do with me right. as a woman. It has nothing to do. I know that the healing of our families, of our communities, of our children, of our church comes when our men are being made whole. They don't have mm. to be whole when they left. But the fact that you kept moving in that direction, yeah, that that's what it's all about. That something, as you said, was sparked. So Absolutely. tell the viewers the story about the wallet. Okay. <laughs> well, I, first of all, I can't believe you even remembered that. that that's, oh, yeah. that's something else. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, when I was 18, uh, my mother had came into the room with this little bitty wallet-sized picture. And she mm -hmm. was standing in the middle of the, like, the living room and she was looking at me. And um, she gave me this picture and then she kind of took a step back and she kind of put her hands, you know, to her face. And I was looking at this picture. I said, I said, who is this? Look at this picture with you looking all, look at you looking all good stuff. I said, I was saying, who is this dude? You know, who is this dude you got in this picture with you? You know, I'll try to be the, the dad or whatever <laughs> to my mother. Uh-huh. <laughs> who is this? So her reaction, did. she never smiled. She never laughed. Her reaction was still like, like she was waiting for my response. And she didn't know, uh -huh. how, she didn't know how my response was going to be. And it took me a minute before it hit home who this person was in my with in this picture. And when I figured out who it was, I just I lost it. I I just I lost it. Because at that time I was 18 and you you know all all me males know how you know what life is about at 18 you know you just now feeling yourself and you're, you're, you're growing up you're, 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 you're trying to make decisions on your life and you know you're not quite a a, a kid anymore you're growing into you know your your, your, men, your malehood and um right you know, and um it was a really hard moment for me but it was a it was a happy moment for me at the same time but then the things kind of went uh, another direction. I went to a uh, job corps mm -hmm. and I was trying to make something out of myself. You know, I picked up a couple of trades and some things and I used to cut hair at, uh, you know, on the campus. I was, you know, the, the campus barber, I guess you could say. And uh, okay. we were about to go home for Thanksgiving and um, I had saved up all my money to go home, you know, on Thanksgiving leave. 
and I had uh, I had a lot of money in this wallet. Um, and you know, in our dorm, there were there were gangs all over the place. You know, they were they were just all wow. kind of gangs. And I wasn't in a gang. They called me a neutron, meaning you know I'm not on <laughs> I'm not on either side. Go figure that. <laughs> okay, okay. So I was a neutron, so nobody would really mess with me. I was really good with everybody. Um, so I had this wallet on the top shelf of my of my locker, and I had my locker open because nobody messed with my stuff. Nobody messed with me. So these guys, long story short, somebody has stole my wallet. And I lost it, y'all. I lost it. I told everybody at the at the dorm, everybody on campus, I don't care about the money. Y'all can keep the money. Mm -hmm. But whoever stole that wallet, I'm 44 years old. I was 18 then. From 18 to 44, whoever stole that wallet stole the only picture that I ha ever had of my father. Since 18 to now, 44, I've still never seen another picture. So even back then, even back then, that was... That was one of the hardest things that ever happened to me. Yeah. I, I just carried around a, a hope in my pocket. I carried around a thought of a father's voice in my, my pocket. My Lord. In my pocket. You never know what a hug would feel like, what guidance would feel like, you know, And, and and my only regret being a 44-year-old man now is I don't want the day to come when the time that I yeah. actually find my father is in a grave. My Lord. I don't care. There's there's nothing really that that he can he can do for me, like, you know, as a man now. You know, right? It's right. nothing. You you know, I'm, I I take care of my family. You know, I'm you know I'm not some crazy guy, whatever that you know that's off in the streets doing whatever, whatever. Right. You know. Right. I was um I was blessed to be spiritually grounded. You know, but just to just to hear his voice would give me so that letter you haven't you guys haven't been in communication since then well see it's funny because what happened was when i got the letter i found out that probably about a month later he was going to be released so i was wow. beyond beyond excited Wow. But what happened was the system it's really messed up because once you're released due to privacy they won't withhold or they won't give you any information on those people. Those people would have to reach out to you. Okay. And so what happened was with him being in the system at least I had access to him. Now him being out of the system, it's like I'm back to square one. Well, I'm going to believe. What's his first name? Are you able? I'm a junior. <laughs> okay. His name Well, is Barry. Barry Matthews Sr., we need you to see this video in Jesus' name. My prophetic anointing, I bring that forth, that he will see this video. It will go around the country. Tag somebody, share it with somebody, link it, invite somebody to listen to this. Barry Sr. is going to find his son. <laughs> and if for nothing else, for the healing in Jesus' name to be, uh, it may not be complete, but it can get closer.
to done in yeah. Jesus' name. And Jesus, tag somebody, share it, let it go. This ain't about me getting how many views. I don't care nothing about that. Yeah. I didn't got thousands of views on stuff. Right now, we're talking about connecting a son and a father. So tag it, share it, <laughs> invite somebody in, in Topeka, Kansas. Mm -hmm. I don't care where they at. <laughs> Now, you know, there's a man who has a story like this. Just go ahead and share it with somebody. Go ahead and share it. Share it. Invite someone. We're going we're gonna to believe God that you guys connect in Jesus' name. Because you said be not, not when he dies. Not when he dies. Yeah. No, we want it in the land of the living. Yeah. Now, his, mm -hmm. his last name is actually Ward. Ward. Barry oh, Ward. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not Ward. I, Look, we had we had a couple different different uh guys that we thought before and all these days is rough rubbing together. It's actually is level. Level like, like Barry level. level. Barry level, yes. Barry like level. <laughs> yeah. Barry yes, level. level. <coughs> okay. Yes. Okay. We, okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. Barry level. Le L E V E L. Yes. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna put it right here in the comments. There it is. I can I can multitask, honey. There it is. Don't there play. it is. We'll get it together. Very. <laughs> is that your wife helping you? Yes, yes, yeah. That's the that's the level head right there. There it is. That's the one. Okay. <laughs> Very level senior. That's who we yes. looking for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, God. He can yeah. do it. He can definitely he do can it. He can do it. Yes. He can do it. Yes. He can do it. So what would you like to share with uh, any male, teenager, adult male that may see this now or see it later, encouraging them? And let me just give you a little bit of why, about what's going to happen on the 7th okay. so you can know. Um, <coughs> it's a little different from the forum. Mm -hmm. Um so our opening speaker is Pastor um, Dr. David Hampton. Mm -hmm. uh, then you'll have breakouts. Uh, we have a breakout on marriage. We have a breakout on PTSD. Mm -hmm. Is it just for soldiers? We have a breakout for millennial manhood. What does manhood look like for the millennial? Mm -hmm. And let me kind of go back a little bit. The PTSD breakout is uh, from... Um, Pastor Cunningham out of uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Okay. And the marriage seminar will be done by A. Thomas Hill. Okay. Of Healing Str yes. the Streams Church. Yes. Um, the uh, millennial manhood will be Tyler, Pastor Tyler Hill and Pastor J. Allen Jr. Uh, from Easter Star and the Streams Church. Amen. Uh, the power of a praying man will be Pastor Donnell Howard of New Liberty. Amen. Um, let's see. Pastor, no, Daryl Brooks from New Liberty. Pastor Donnell Howard will be doing a workshop on mentoring. Okay. Why men should mentor. Absolutely. And he, his church is uh, uh, Hovey Street. Mm. Uh, we also have two millennial young men doing a workshop on forgiveness. Uh, Whitney good. Oliver and um, Malcolm Taylor. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have, it seems like I'm free. Oh, um, my brother, Gardis Tate, will be doing a workshop on um, how how to lose a million. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. You got to get but that it's back. Really how not yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so that just what that looked like when that happened to him. So mm -hmm. basically how not to do it. Hey man. Um and then we have um Jamal Smith, uh, who is now the district athletic uh director for IPS. Okay. And he will be doing a workshop on from the street corner to the corner office. Okay. Okay. So, you know, get your game right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Change your game. Come uh, off the street corner. That's right. And then Paul Bateman will be doing uh, a workshop on life after incarceration. Very good. Very good. So we have from, like I said, from the teenager to the adult male, we have a wonderful lineup. And so uh, based on what you heard, what would you, which workshop would you want to go to? No. All of them. <laughs> 
<laughs> Amen. How, how, Amen. How are we going to be able Amen. to get into all of them? <laughs> well, you'll get three. So you'll get three. You get two in the morning and then one in the afternoon. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. And then the um, Bishop Sapp will be up as our closing uh, speaker. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we will have um, we will have what we, what God has given me call uh, the rest reconciliation restoration ceremony, which I would like for you oh, to be part that is, of. That is yes. Yeah, and yeah. so what we will do, the women who are invited, they will come at 2 o'clock and they'll be in a private room and we'll minister to them. They'll get a sheet of paper. They'll write their name on the paper. They'll check off their male hurt, like mm -hmm. how men have wow. Wow. And they will bring those sheets into the sanctuary and we will place them in front of an individual man just randomly. And you guys will take that paper and taking that paper, you would say, Tuesday, I'm sorry this happened to you. Mm. Will you forgive me? Mm. And so you're standing proxy for the men who hurt them. Right. And then you'll short prayer and then we will escort her out. One of the That's reasons I'm not allowing the women to speak is because one, even though we think we're healed, saying it can be emotional. Right. And it could take the event in another direction. Mm -hmm. But what was important to me was that sometimes it's important for men and women, but right now we're talking about the women, that they hear someone say, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that their pain is acknowledged. Their hurt is acknowledged. And some may come on the verge that they're almost at healing. They're almost at whole. But if they can share it with someone, if they can have someone acknowledge it, it could just possibly take them to a complete place of wholeness. Mm -hmm. And so if the whole day is being set aside for men to get to that place, I just kept asking God, how can I bridge this right. for the women? Right. So uh, we're only taking 50 women because one, I'm not sure how many, my goal is 200 men. Um, but it won't be all the men participating in that. I'm handpicking those men to participate in that. And so if I, you know, have 10 or if I have 20, I just want to be mindful um, of how many women I take. And then after that, you guys will close with a fire tunnel. And it's just your time to pray over each other wow. and speak into each other's lives and declare God's purpose and glory as king, priest, and prophet. Yes. And then we go home. Yes, yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. So it's still only women, only men, no women in the sanctuary, no women in the breakouts. Okay. Um, so it, it's still a men, a men's only event because I recognize one of the things, honestly, Barry, I would set aside because initially I thought, oh, men aren't really going to talk. Mm. So I would only give like two hours. Mm. And that first time you guys were there like three and a half hours. Yes. Yes. It was heavy. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it was, heavy. it was heavy. It was, it was heavy. There's no question. I mean, you had you had you had some guys that were actually there with their sons, with yeah. their sons, and there was still a, a disconnect. And and they're right there. Yeah. So you know whether they were in their lives or not. I mean this this was powerful. Yeah. And one of the things I I. I tell people in our household, our father was there, but our father was not involved and he wasn't engaged. Mm -hmm. My father knew how to provide. He was going, he was going to provide for them six kids. He knew how to provide. He definitely knew how to discipline. He, he, had, he was a master at that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he knew how to instruct because uh, God, there are men, men come into the world God created them to provide, protect, instruct, and discipline. Right. My father was very good at providing and disciplining um, and instructing. He didn't always know how to protect us from him. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that, you know, but at this place in my life, I'm grateful that I've taken the journey to forgive my father. Right. And from that is the book that I've been writing for 10 years now, My Daddy's Demons. Mm. And I, my goal was to have it done for this conference, but it's not going to be done. So that's okay, but mm -hmm. it will be done. Mm -hmm. But, um, but understanding 
Pastor Hill sings this. Well, I, well it wasn't the song, even though he's going to sing the song, My Father's Chair, wow. at the conference. Mm -hmm. he, he, I heard him say something when we were at Eastern Star at a youth conference. And he said he realized that his father could only give him what he gave him. Right. And he couldn't blame him for what he didn't, what he couldn't give him. That, that even though that was said, I don't know, maybe five or 10 years before Healing Strength started, and we're in 14 years. Mm -hmm. So it's been 19 years, let's just say, since I heard that. Wow. That you can't blame him for what he was unable to give you. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, and that's what started my healing. Like, okay, he couldn't give me a daddy's love. Right. He didn't know how to do that. He, he didn't know how to be a father. Right. Yeah. He didn't have he it. He didn't have it. He didn't know what it meant. What's a dad? And then even the revelation, Barry, when, because the only time I would come into the forum was to introduce the next topic, and then I would let you guys have that it. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I introduced was the difference between a father and a daddy. Mm -hmm. And I had so many men say to me, I never thought about the difference. Oh, yeah. There's a difference. Bro, there's there's a difference. definitely a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, 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 even with God, there's mm -hmm. oh, a difference. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. You know, he's our father, but he's also our Abba father. He's our daddy. Mm -hmm. That word literally means daddy. Mm-hmm. And when I first, I got saved when I was, I don't know, 13. Whew. What you thinking? Go ahead. No, that just, you know, it, 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 it hits home. It hits home when you're talking yeah. about Abba. It really, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, you almost went past that a little bit fast, you know, a little bit too fast. Yeah. But that makes yeah. it yeah. For, 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 the, um, for the orphan or for the, um, for the, for the, just a child that just is by himself, you know? Yeah. You know, when you say Abba, ooh, that's, that's. Yeah, it he's daddy. Some, when... It just gives you an overwhelming <laughs> sense of hope. An overwhelming yeah, sense of. When, well, yeah, when he, when people say, you know, God is, well, the scripture, God is a father to the father. Yes. But I was going with. It. But for us to understand, he's your daddy. And daddy is that loving, nurturing, sit up on your lap. Lap is a safe lap, mm -hmm. if you get what I'm saying. Yes. It's a safe lap. It's not a tainted lap right. where you're going to walk away and been abused from that lap. Right. But it, it's the it, daddy, it's the part that he tells you. You're beautiful. You're handsome, son. You're smart. You're good at that. Mm -hmm. Let me help you become better with that. You know, it's the it's that part of the father that many of us never didn't get to see. Right. Even if we had a father in the house, we didn't get to see a dad. Right, right. We saw the provider, the protector, the disciplinarian, and kind of the instructor. And a lot of times, his instruction was demand: right. sit down, shut up, right. be quiet. Do what I said, not what I, you know, what was that saying? Do as I say, not as I do. Right, right. Do as I, yeah, something like yeah. that. So <laughs> when I first accepted my call to ministry, mm -hmm. and I, well, that's not true. That's not true. When I first started studying the word when I was at Easter Star, and just studying, because Pastor Jay would say, go study it for yourself. So I would. Mm -hmm. And I ran across that scripture about, Abba Father, and I'm and was just drawn to what does that mean? What does that word? When I found out that I could call God Daddy, I don't even think I ever prayed our Father which art in heaven no more. Mm. I didn't even I, I had no use for Father. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I had no use to call God because that was a given. He was my heavenly father. I needed to know a daddy. Mm. Mm. So for years I never called God Father. Mm. Never. I always refer to him as daddy. And people, <clears throat> even when I transitioned with Pastor Hill to Healing Streams, people would come to me and say, man, I miss hearing you pray to God and call him daddy. Mm. When I was the worship leader at Easter Star. Mm. They, that's, they, that's what I was remembered for. Because wow. that's all I knew, God. I, he was my daddy. Because that's what I needed. Mm. I needed a daddy to tell me, you're smart, you're pretty, you can do anything. Right. I believe in you. That's what I needed God to be for me. Right. 
and and so many people we interact with heavenly father god the way we do our earthly father mm -hmm. and when we don't have a good relationship with our earthly father yeah we respond the same way with our heavenly father and he was like i ain't like that dude yeah yeah i'm not i'm not I'm everything you do in my eyes is not failure. God is saying mm -hmm. everything you do in my eyes is good mm -hmm. because I created you good. I know you got these tendencies, but to me, you all together lovely because you mine, mm -hmm. but we, we carry so much guilt and shame and condemnation because we don't know. We don't have the identity of our earthly father. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't know that, we can look to our Heavenly Father and get everything that we need. But God knows the absence that we feel right. when we don't have that earthly father. And, and that's why fathers are so important. I was in class the other day. And somehow my kids started talking about, I don't know how they got to this, mm. but I don't know how they got to this. I'm really trying to think maybe because I've been sick for three days. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they said, they said, one of the girls said something like, we all, we all come from men. Some way she said it. And I was like, we're in a math class. And I said, okay, do y'all really want to go there? Mm -hmm. And they was like, yeah, Miss Tate. I said, okay, we're going to have a quick little biology you know he class and i said well the the life is in the man life is in the seed of the man mm -hmm. and of course some people were like some of the kids these were eighth graders they was like see what are you talking i right. said okay uh so i'm trying to be you know right right <laughs> politically correct in a math class i said well um okay i'll just say it i said life is in the sperm of the male. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, and, you know, some of them was kind of shy and goofy with it. Mm -hmm. And I said, but women are the incubators. We mm -hmm. carry that life. Mm -hmm. But life is in the blood. There's no blood that, that is in that egg. But when the egg and the seed connect, and I said, and this is why, and I'm talking to the boys, I said, this is why it is so important mm. that you don't just release your seed anywhere. Oh my if goodness. you're not trying to be a per, per, I said, you, I said, and this is why the scripture talks about scattering your seed. Yeah, come on. Mm -hmm. And it falls along the rocky. Yes. And it falls, and, and, it, and it, 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 this seed, it falls along rocks. This seed, the birds eat it up. I said, this is why you can't just scatter your seed. That's right. Your seed needs to be planted in a woman that you love. That's right. And you want to have children with. That's right. Because life is in your seed. Mm hmm. And I, and I said, now, if I was to ask y'all in this class about 30 kids, how many of y'all, you ain't got to raise your hand, how many of you have a relationship with your dad? 30 kids, I would say. Maybe three of 10 them. 10 raised their hand. Oh, okay, 10. 10 wow. raised their hand. I will say 10. And I said, okay. And of that 10, no, 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 that's not true. How many of you know who your father is? Like 10 of them. Mm -hmm. No, I'm going I'm to say 15. I'm going to say half. And of that half, about four of them said they have a relationship. Yeah, that's about what I thought. So the other half don't even know who their daddy is. Mm. The other half don't even know who their daddy is. Mm. Then you got 15 who know who he is, but about, and I think I was being generous when I said 15. I would say about 10 of them don't even have a relationship with them. Mm. It, it's just, and this is why I keep saying it's not an epidemic. We have to stop saying it's an epidemic because epidemics have an ending. Mm. Epidemics have an ending. This has been going on in our community since the 70s. Wow. And we, we have to recognize the statistics and see, I don't want to get focused just on the young people because the adult men won't come because ultimately the conference is about building men to be all that God wants them to mm -hmm. be as priests, kings, and prophets, as husbands, as fathers, as leaders, as mentors. Yes. But in that, 
We have, this is why I want the teens there mm -hmm. so that they can be in the same place and see men who are seeking what they want to become. Right. right. They may not be there yet. The men may not be there yet. And some of them are there, but at least they can be in the midst of those who are striving for it. Those who are already there and they can see what it's like. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So, <laughs> but the statistics are real. You know, seven, if, if 10 girls, seven out of 10 girls are likely to be molested when there's no fam no father around. Mm. Lord. You, you, uh, of the, of the 83, 89, 89% of juveniles that are in juvenile have no father in their life. 92% mm. of men who are in prison have no father in their life. Wow. Are you are more you are five times more likely to be in poverty when you don't have a father in the home? Wow, it's, the, it's just real. And then when you start making it, um, when you start putting it in race categories, mm -hmm. meaning black people, right. it goes up exponentially. Mm -hmm. So it's a problem throughout all of our 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 world, our country, mm. but it's more so in our community. Wow. And so your story always, I remember you made a statement. You said every year that picture grew more faint. Right. Right. And and you couldn't remember him. Right. Yeah. What that picture looked like. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I'm I, and it's and where I am now, it's that's about the same. Um, wow. it's a cross, you know, I, I, I look at guys and I kind of fill in the pieces, you know, try to fill in the pieces, you know, and I look at myself and try to fill in the pieces on what an elderly me would look like. <laughs> right. I try to fill in the pieces. You can use one of them apps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> this is what you'll look like at 70. You know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I really, I know um, when I first started, I would do the women in, in the women's forum, uh, father loss forum specifically dedicated to the women. And it was just as effective. Mm -hmm. However, as the years went on, I realized men just seemed to need more of it because quite honestly, I don't think you guys really were brought into settings to feel free and comfortable to have this type of dialogue. Oh, no doubt. I mean, number one, I mean, if you think about it, um, men weren't even taught that it's okay to show emotion. Right. You know, so you get a room full of men, you got to break down, you got to peel some onion, you know, you got to take down some layers before that that we'll even be able to, you know, know that it's all right, you know. Yeah, and it's okay. You're right, you know. And um, you know, for so many years, you know, a, a man crying that would be viewed as being weak, you know. And, you know, guys, you know, ain't no guys about to <laughs> about to cry. About to cry. Of another guy. You know what? You know that's funny because. During the um, <laughs> during the forum, you know, I have a wonderful team of sisters who help me, and um, they like with us, we we put the tissue out, mm -hmm. like you know, at every row, every seat, mm -hmm. and um, I was like, no, nah, don't do that, don't don't put it out there. Like they was like, but what if they? I said, well, they will. They they will, but but don't set them up because if they see it, they're gonna be like, I ain't crying. Oh, you you planning on me? Crying? Right, 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 right. <laughs> but I wanted to say this. Um, in this book we wrote, I tasted my tears today. Mm. Uh, Nick Bolden, uh, Elder Nick Bolden, wrote a chapter in this book titled, and we co-authored it, but he was the headliner. Mm. Titled "The Tears of the Brethren." Mm. And um, one of the pullouts, it says, as men develop cool coping skills mm -hmm. and mechanisms, we become masters of having a swag in the place of pain. Mm. We replace our pain, pain with, swag. with swag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it was, it just was a wonderful um, 
it's a really good chapter for men on how men were raised not to cry. Mm -hmm. Um, Someone said the affirmation of a father makes a child believe, okay, Brother Randall, that he or she can take on, that's the truth. I, that's biblical. He said that affirmation makes a child know that they can believe that they can take on the world and be victorious. This is biblically mm -hmm. why the father named the child, why the father Absolutely. placed his hands on the child. Absolutely. That wasn't the mother's job. Mm-hmm. And, and and bless God, Lord knows, bless God. I was started to say that I would do the forum with the with the women. Mm -hmm. And I remember in one of the forums, one of the ladies at the end stood up and said she repented because all her life, her daughter's life, she has told her father, I'm your mother, and I'm your father. Yeah. Yeah. And and she said she never <laughs> thought about how how that set could set up something in her, even as she moved forward in relationships with men, because we talk about that with the women. The other thing we talk about is how women say, um, my son, my daughter, mm -hmm. not our. And if you want your, the baby's father, the child's father to take ownership of that child, you have to start including him in the verbiage. Right. So if you don't give you don't give my son child support, you don't never come and see my daughter. Call him our. Mm -hmm. Call her our. Call her your. You don't never come see your daughter. You don't call your daughter. You don't da 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 da, -da your son. Mm -hmm. You have to give them ownership. This is, is psychology one on one. Oh yeah. It, it's the it's the guy that takes somebody hostage. You know all the TV shows, and they say use the hostage's name. <laughs> Use their name so that they will take, it will become personal. Right. That person becomes a person to them. And so these are the things that we would talk about with the women. And at one of the forums, one of the sisters stood up and she said, I apologize. I never thought about the impact. And she actually went before the conference was over and called her daughter and apologized wow. for um, just always putting that on her that I'm your, and she said and to some degree that probably gave her no urgency to build a relationship with her father because mom was doing it all. Right. I don't need you. And even how that impacted her through life. I don't need a man. Mama didn't need a man. Mama can be mama and daddy. Hmm. And we don't understand psychologically just how we plant those seeds. They don't mean any harm. Mm -hmm. They just know that they are stepping in to playing both roles. Right. But if it's possible for that father to be in that child's life, do our best as women not to interfere with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he out there doing drugs and he's not living a, a life that, that represents what you want your child to be a part of, then absolutely not. Right. And if you have to have supervised visitation, do that. Right. right? But um yeah it's it's just so much to this and I'm oh, I'm just yeah. grateful oh, grateful yeah. grateful that you have been a support and a cheerleader and we're going to get this word out there and get the men and the team boys to the conference so Absolutely. what would you like to leave with our our viewers brother Barry um the thing that sticks out to me the most um is if you are a father or if you are a son it doesn't matter which one of you reach out to go try try to have a relationship with that with that person. Do it. That's um, good. We don't have time. Um, we can't get back time. We can't get back time. Um, in this day and age, we've got all sorts of technology to reach out and find our loved ones, our fathers or our sons. Um, no matter what happened within, with, uh, between the relationship of the guy and the woman, um, there were children involved that didn't ask to be here. My Lord. Um, and some of them grown now. That, and that's exactly right. That's exactly <laughs> right. Um, and still have that, that child mentality or that child, um, inner voice within them that are still 
that same person, even though the years yeah. have the years have you know have uh you know taken place or whatnot. But that's that's that that young person is still there, still they are still searching and still asking questions, still wondering. You know, mm -hmm. I thought it would I thought it would end at some point. I thought I would mm. stop doing that at some point. <laughs> But, wow. but it but it never ends. I'm gonna tell you one more yeah. thing. You 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 touched on something earlier. I was watching a movie, and I was at home by myself when I watched this movie. This movie is called The Shack. Yes. Yes. Excellent book. Excellent movie. That movie healed me also in so many ways because. Um. You had a you had a you had a young man that didn't you know was abused by his father, so he didn't really know how to be relational and how to re really be there for his son. Well, little did he his son know that his grandfather was beaten by his father. So they were just he was just like you said earlier. He didn't know how to be a father. Because he, it wasn't mm -hmm. shown to him. You said that your your father knew how to discipline real well. Well, that's how this how this guy. That's the only thing this guy knew how to do was beat his kids. He didn't know how to love on them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that forgiveness piece, that was a major. That was that was just major. Um, yeah, there's you're right. There's so many different levels to this. There's so yeah. many different levels, but. Um, that mentoring ship you were talking about, that's a major piece as well, because there are guys that don't know their fathers, but I like, so I'm going to speak for myself. I would have loved to have had a, a, a male role model or a male to tell me, you know, um, which path to go or, you know, stay in school, do your best, you know, or how to treat a woman, how to, how to respect women, you know, uh, you know, I had to learn things on down the line, you know. Yeah. I had to bump my head several times. <laughs> but, you know, I learned on my own. So I could have saved myself a lot of time and heartache had I had a, a male role model or a male figure in my life. So mm -hmm. I I love doing that now um, to men or to young teens. Um it was once told to me a long time ago by um, one coach, Tamiko Whitaker. <laughs> mm -hmm. She told me one time that I would be the father to the fatherless. I didn't understand that at the time. Now I do. Because yeah. there are even men my age that I mentor. My age. That don't, yes. That don't even, yes. That don't, that don't, in the natural, that don't even make sense. And don't be surprised that there will be those older than you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's something. Good. You have an old spirit, so age <laughs> really won't. Age doesn't even come into play when, when men are around you. I mean, if you don't tell them. If you had a conversation with some, someone over the phone, they may not even really know that you're 44. They may think you're much older than that. You have a very old spirit, but life has produced that yes. and, and your relationship with God. Yes, that's that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a brother the other, other day, um, Marcus Gibson. He called me and he was having some problems with his break. And um, he didn't think, it was late, it was dark outside. And I told him that I was coming over. And this is a lot of time. This is this is something where men fall short, even with their sons or or whatever. If you tell them you're gonna do something, if you tell them you're gonna be there, be there. You know, you let your word be your bond. You know, ah, I, I ain't heard that in a long time. <laughs> and the old that was what my about. daddy used to say. <laughs> yeah. But I told him that I would be there. I told him that I would help him if he just called me. I would be there. He and he didn't want me to come because it was dark. I told him, I said, brother, I'm on my way. I got a light. 
or if we ain't got no light, if there ain't enough light, we can use our cell phones and and, and use the light on our cell phones. Uh huh. Uh huh. And um, where it would have took him a long time to get it done, it took me a matter of minutes to get it done because I, I just had the experience, you know. Mm, you just said something right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that experience. Yes. And um, and it wasn't about nothing else but the the fellowship and the. You know, just to let him know that I'm gonna be there. I want my life to to line up with, with what I say. You know, I don't want to yeah. just talk about. It, I want to be about it. You know what I mean? Ah. And um, that that was just one one incident. I mean, one one thing that happened where I could see how you know a, a role model would would uh or a father figure or you know a mentor could be impactful. Yeah, I want to read this before we get off. This is a uh, from the chapter that Nick wrote in this book. I tasted my tears today, Nick Bolden. He said, boys are left to grow up on their own into men that are expected to carry their pain as a badge of honor mm -hmm. without being allowed to ever reveal any or very few signs of emotions in their homes, churches, or communities. They are and have been sent into this world and society without the tools right. or resources needed to be healthy, wise, strong, well-rounded leaders that God created them to be. Many with bumps and bruises and losses and unfulfilled dreams yeah. along the way. They fake it until prayerfully they make it. Mm -hmm. We need the brethren to be whole. Absolutely. We release and charge you to get information. Your women, your children, your community, your society and society. We need you. We need our men in position and in alignment to lead rightly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tears of the brethren in this book. So that's major. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's so. major. I thank you, Brother Barry, for joining me today and sharing your story. Mm -hmm. And as people go back, listen to the beginning, because that's where you're going to be even more blessed by Barry's testimony uh, regarding his father. And uh, hey, Carl Pollock from Benton Harbor. <laughs> so um, thank you all who have posted. And I've seen that you've been watching and listening. If you are in Indianapolis, if you can get to Indianapolis, yes. make this a road trip for you and your boy. Oh yeah. And I'm going to let wow. you, I'm going to let you say it. Make this a road trip. We got the movie girls trip and everybody want to go to New Orleans. We telling y'all to come to Indianapolis on April the 7th. It's a Saturday. It's one day, only $35 for men. $10 for teens, mm. that $35 gets you continental breakfast, all of the workshops, Marvin Sapp, Dr. Uh, David Hampton, a plated lunch. You can't get that for $35. Come on. Come on. And we have wonderful sponsors. Uh, Opportune Indy presents the Father for Men's Conference. Uh, Opportune Indy is an extension of Indiana Black Expo. Mm -hmm. So they are our presenting sponsor. The Fathers and Family is a sponsor. We're waiting on a couple of other community partners to be sponsors. So we need you all to come. It doesn't help to have the dollars That's right. to cover the expenses and to bring you an awesome conference. If the men aren't there. That's right. <laughs> and the teens aren't there. I believe... When God gave me this, and I'm going to share this, Brother Barry. I know you need to go, and I need to stop talking so I can take my medicine. But <laughs> one of the things the Lord showed me when I really struggle with, God, I'm a woman, da, da, da. And he, he, I was, I was, I don't know if I was dreaming or if this was an open vision. But the Lord, I heard the Lord say clearly, I sent a man to start a movement with women. Mm. And I'm like, what? And I always watch T.D. Jakes every morning. Mm -hmm. And I woke up, maybe I was already halfway woke and he was on. And and immediately when I looked at the TV, I knew what God was talking about. Wow. He gave T.D. Jakes woman thou art loose when he was in West Virginia, when nobody didn't know who Bishop Jakes was. He wasn't even Bishop Jakes then. Right. But he gave him woman thou art loose. And he comforted me, and I will use whomever I choose to reach whomever I choose to reach. Amen. So 
And the beauty of this was that I was already in the back, right? I wasn't, it's the vision he gave me and I promote it. But when it's executed, I don't even really, I'm not really seen. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't even have anything to do with me. I know God wants his men healed. Amen. And I know our women need our men healed and our children need our men healed. I say this all the time. Our men are, and I don't mean this in any derogatory way, I promise you. Help us. But I, 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 I will say this. I advise and counsel so many men. Mm -hmm. And so many married couples, even though I'm single right now. And a lot of times in those sessions, the wives will say to me, why are you taking his side? I'm not taking his side. Mm. I just get his pain. Mm. For whatever reason, God has allowed me to understand a man's pain. Mm. And I'm very much a woman. Wow. Five inches in all. But I, I so often when they talk to me, I see this little boy. <laughs> with the 45 inch stretch chest jacket and the 18 neck shirt for his tie. And I see his cufflinks and, but I've seen him with his clothes falling off of him because they're too big because wow. on the inside it's this little boy that's hurting. Wow. And he needs his father and short of, God becoming that father or some man coming alongside of him. And even a lot of times when the mentor comes alongside, it, it builds them up. But it's nothing like what that brother said earlier in the thread. It's nothing like your father no. telling you. And God created this thing that it's gender to gender, woman to daughter and father to son. He did that. And yes, yes, there's the cross things that we understand. But how does a man know how to treat a woman if he's never seen? But we got it. We know that God can do it. Mm -hmm. We know that, that the Holy Spirit can do it. But, but men, and tell me if I'm wrong, you all learn by what you see. Mm -hmm. You learn by example. Mm-hmm. And so if you see it, you're quicker to do it. Absolutely. Whether it's done wrong or it's done right. It's short of God. Mm. There's so many men, young boys out here with, with drive-by prayer visual. When I was really involved with drive-by prayer visual, I would always go to the boys. Mm. I would always go over there with their pants sagging and their jackets hanging off of them. And they look like they ready to blaze with anger to go take somebody out mm. who took their friend out. Come on. And I can't tell you how many times I said to young boys, it's okay to be angry. Son, it's okay. You can be angry. And they'll look at me. What? What you say, man? What? No, this is what they say. What you say, ma'am? Ha ha. Gun. You see the gun, Barry. You see it? You see it back there in the back of their pants? Mm -hmm. You see it with their jacket over it? But they like, what you say, ma'am? Right. Still know how to be polite. Right. Because the right man just ain't touched him yet. That's all. That's it. And we know the right man is Jesus. That's it. But in that setting, and I would say every almost every time it's okay for you to be angry. Mm -hmm. And they say what I said, but I said, what if I told you God said it's okay for you to be angry? Mm -hmm. The word, the Bible says it's okay for you to be angry. Mm -hmm. For real? Yeah. He just don't want you to sin. He just don't want you to take that gun that you got on you and go shoot it. Right. He just don't want you to go kill somebody else and have somebody else's mama out here screaming. Right, right. Or or the gun be turned on you. I, I remember vividly this house and we were all on the porch and praying and pastors praying out into those of us who are on the street and, and the boys. I went over there to these young men. They were probably in their early 20s and I went over there and I, it ain't got nothing to do with me. But I knew what they, I could hear their conversation in the spirit. We're going to get that nigga. We know who did it. That MF. I lit, God allowed me to literally go and repeat the words to them. Wow. And they were like, 
did you hear us? Did you just hear us talking? I'm like, no, nah, son, I didn't hear none. I'm just, this is God. And I'm telling you, don't do it. Because mm. it won't just be who you get. And it's going to be one of y'all too. And it's going to be y'all mama out here. Right, right. But they're hopeless. Yes. A lot of what we're seeing on the streets, and I'm getting, uh, really, I'm not getting off topic, but a lot of what we're seeing is because our men, our young boys are hopeless. Mm -hmm. They have no hope. Mm -hmm. And we know that Jesus Christ is the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. I get, I, I, you and I, we know that. Yeah. But they don't know that. Because mm -hmm. hope to them looks like how I'm eating, how I'm driving, how I'm dressing, how I'm living. You're right. For right now. And, and they, don't, they don't draw that mm -hmm. correlation with being a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ. That's right. Pastors, if you're watching, if you get a chance to listen, I need you to get your men there. I need you to get your teens there. If nothing's going on at your church on April the 7th, please. And even if it is, there may be a few men that may not be involved in that activity that's going on. Right. Invite them. Encourage them. I had one pastor inbox me. He said, they had something going on. He said, but I put the flyer in our bulletin and we're announcing it. So we're expecting men to come. So if that's all you can do, let me know. Download the flyer from my page. I think I've emailed it to every pastor in the city. I'll email it again. Put it in your bulletin. Put it in your announcements. Ask them to come. If we get enough sponsorships, Barry, I'm believing the, the conference will be free. Amen. 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 But right now, Right now, it's $35. <laughs> uh, okay. Fair, and that's fair. That's fair. That's Yeah, that's easy. Because they know if they went to uh, Manpower, and everybody know T.D. Jakes is my other spiritual father and mentor. He don't know it yet. But if they went on down to Dallas, they know that what they're going to be paying. Mm -hmm. And, and we, have, uh, we have a Manpower event mm -hmm. right here in Indianapolis. So get you a boys trip. Mm -hmm. If you are anywhere in driving distance of Indianapolis, and just come on down. We will be finished by 4 or 5 o'clock, and you can get right back on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, if you three, four, five hours away. So I love you with the love of the Lord, my brother. You want to close, and I promise you are closing us. Whatever you say, that's going to be it. Love you too. <laughs> yes, this is a, ch I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to the men um, in, our, in our language. This is a challenge. <laughs> I challenge you to come out to the Father's yes. form. I challenge you. I challenge you to reach back and grab somebody with with you when you come. That's a challenge. Yeah. That's a challenge. And meet me there. Fraternities. Right, that's it. That's it. Come on out. Yeah, men's ministry. Yes, come on out. Come on out. Yeah, yeah. April the 7th at Westside Church mm -hmm. on La Paz Trail where Pastor Michael Bryant is the pastor. What time? Um, what time? Doors open at 7.30. Continental Breakfast is from 8 to 8.30. We will kick off at 8.45. If anybody know me, my stuff starts on time and it ends on time. Now, the Holy Spirit can have his way. Amen. If, if y'all still there on the floor at 6 o'clock, uh, that probably won't work because Pastor Bryant will probably need y'all out because they got church on Sunday morning. <laughs> but y'all are free to let the Holy Spirit flow. If the agenda gets messed up, God knows. So uh, we truly want the Lord uh, to have his way. Uh, Carlton Amos is our worship leader for the day. Uh, Percy Bland will be presenting hey. um, um, spoken word. Shout out, Percy um, Bland. You, yeah. So we, we really do have an amazing, amazing lineup for our brothers. Good, so it's all good. about y'all on April the 7th. Good, good. Amen. Amen. All right. All right, Brother Barry. I love you. I appreciate you. Kiss Tina for me. I sure and will. You all have a blessed life, blessed day. Amen. Bye. Love you, girl. Love you. Bless you. Bye-bye.